Today, I am going to talk with you how functional genomics is studied in relation to understanding process of development or in other words, cell differentiation. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> this aspect is very poorly understood, although we know biochemical basis of um, uh, differentiation and development is well understood, but molecular basis of development is not uh, that well understood. When I say molecular basis, I'm referring to the genes involved in developmental processes. But uh, among all the developmental processes which, which were studied time to time, root development is the one, or root or shoot development is the one aspect which is least understood. We have bulk of information generated uh, about fruit development, how it takes place, uh, seed set and the seed, uh, seed development and the fruit development. But uh, fruit development and the shoot development is least understood. So keeping these in mind, uh, we started working on to understand this process of development. So whenever you want to study something, we should have we should have a model system to uh, to to be used. So to understand the process of cell differentiation, uh, we use this in vitro. Uh, developmental system which we which was working well in my lab that is you have the X plant starting from mature seeds you induce callus and then when this callus is put on a dif differentiating medium within uh, 12 days 12 to 14 days uh, you see the greening of callus taking place greening shows the uh, differentiating cells into shoots uh, into shoots. Okay, so this system we exploited. It means when you when you change the media composition from calcium medium, that is here if you see MS basal two milligram two four D and uh, 0 0.5 milligram kinetin. So this is the composition for callus induction. And when this calcium is put on this media, which consists of 5 mg BAP and 0.5 mg NAA. So kinetin and oxygen composition is changed. And this change brings about the cytodifferentiation into roots, uh, shoots actually, shoot and root basically. So <clears throat> this system was uh, we thought of exploiting to understand that what kind of uh, molecular changes the cells undergo uh, during these 12 to 14 days and if we can track uh, the genes which are getting expressed during this phase probably we may end up having uh, some information about the genes involved in cytodifferentiation. Now the approach which was used here you know the RNAs were extracted from uh, from different, uh, uh, in, um, at different intervals. For example, the day the KLA is uh, transferred, so zero, that was taken as zero time. And then after every four days, fourth day, eighth day, and twelfth day. So this is, uh, the RNAs were extracted from all these things and the CDNA was uh, synthesized. So you have now uh, CDNA from four different samples. One is, you can say, control, where the proliferating KLI was taken. And then after transferring to the cell differentiating media, we took out RNA and the CDNA is synthesized. Okay. So this pool of uh, CDNA here will give us the status of different transcripts being synthesized uh, during uh, the differentiation process. Okay. 
and the approach which is used here is RAPD RTPCR. Now, this is something which I referred in uh, my couple of lectures before, different approaches, if you remember. Uh, and one of the approach was PCR-based uh, based, uh, uh, gene discovery methods. So this is one of them, actually, which we very effectively used. Now, what happens here, for example, when you take the, the cDNA prepared, prepared from 0, 4, 8, and 12 uh, days and use random primers for amplification. So what you see here, uh, you see common amplifications like this, 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 and these bands, they are present in all. Now, it, this pool of amplicons indicate that the common templates present in the samples. But if you see this amplification, now this is present only in, in four-day-old cali and the 12-day-old cali. It is not present in control, indicating thereby that this amplicon has uh, used a template which is not present in the control. And that's where it, is, it means it is the gene which is expressing very specifically during cytodifferentiation, you know, from say zero to 12 hours. So uh, ideally and conceptually, what is done in this approach is uh, you uh, take out this amplicon and clone it and sequence it. You know, so uh, that is what was uh, done. And also we have to keep in mind that when you use random primers, they can amplify any region of the gene. For example, in this case, if this is the whole gene, this set of primer amplified a 984 base pair region from this. So it was not the complete gene. So it was only part of the gene which was amplified. So this was then completed using uh, five prime, three prime race analysis. So what is done in this, you know, uh, gene specific primers were developed from uh, this region and uh, then uh, it's a kit actually. Uh, you have uh, one gene here and one gene, gene specific. So you amplify, you can amplify this region. And similarly, three prime race gives you the, uh, the, the sequence from here to here. And then you can amplify the complete sequence. And that's how it is done. Uh, and means using the gene specific primers from this end to this end, uh, the total uh, cDNA was uh, or mRNA was uh, amplified, which was 2,414 base pair long. You know, so that's how uh, the gene sequence is completed, and also the gene product. You can you know amplify this whole thing from here. So, <clears throat> to put things in right perspective, this is the scenario which emerged after sequencing and completing the, 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 the transcript using five prime, three prime rays. If you see this pink color is the one from here to here, it was amplified using random primers. And then the sequence was completed from end to end, uh, this blue one, ATG, to this, and then from this to the three prime end of the chain. So total size of this was 2414 base pair, you know, and out of this, the coding region was uh, of 2157 base pairs. So remaining was un, uh, untranslated region, okay. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, once you have a sequence in hand, 
your job is facilitated by biochromatic analysis. Uh, you can try a whole lot of information uh, using this uh, tool. So that is what was done when the bioinformatic analysis was done, like the sequence analysis or the uh, P-BLAST uh, by uh, in vitro translating, getting amino acid sequence. And uh, so this analysis revealed that it is showing uh, almost 91% uh, homology or identity with wall associated kinase of rice. You know. uh, and there was uh, some identities with Arabidopsis and wheat also, but all of them were hitting to wall associated kinases. Okay. So, so when we look for the functional domains or the conserved domains, you know, in this protein, uh, it was very interesting to see that it had uh, following domains. So it had uh, the uh, it had the signal peptide initially here at the N-terminal end. As you know, signal role of signal peptides is to take the protein synthesized with its site of action. Okay, so it has signal peptide, and then it had two EGF domains. That is EGF one and EGF two. What are the EGFs? Is the epidermal growth factor like calcium dependent or calcium binding domains? Okay, and then it had a transmembrane domain. Okay, and then SDYKC or CD threonine kinase domain. Okay, so this was revealed by bioinformatic analysis. So it means that the protein coding for uh, coded by this gene has following domains and it is taken to basically taken to side membrane. Okay, so we will uh, know about it in a while. So, uh, two things we have uh, understood one is that, uh, uh, that it is a putative wall associated kinase. When I say wall, it is the cell wall in plants and uh, it has uh, functional domains like EGF1, EGF2, transmembrane domain and serine threonine kinase domain. Okay. Now further analysis uh, revealed that it had uh, it had uh, Lot of uh, homology and uh, similarity with with the uh, walks of Arabidopsis. If you see here, you know uh, it has lot of uh, uh, the, the the amino acid deduced from uh, from the, the nucleotide sequence had lot of identities with uh, Arabidopsis uh, walks or walrus kinases. So this is our sequence query sequence and. And this is the Arab doxes, five of them which were uh, which were uh, annotated and studied in case of Arab doxes. You know. uh, now, if you look at the genomic composition, because Arab doxes genome sequence was known and the rice genome sequence was known, so when we blasted this sequence to find out what is the composition of gene in the genome. And what you see here, this is the composition of the rice walk, and this is in Arabidopsis. So Arabidopsis gene is much smaller in size, whereas the rice gene is longer. And this difference in the length is or is dependent on the size of introns. The axon remains the same, and the domains, if you see. This is the signal peptide domain in both. And then this is the EGF1, EGF2, the transmembrane, and serine threonine kinase. You know, so uh, both rice and Arabidopsis shared the same domains. And uh, also we could find out 
by looking at the gene position onto the genome of rice that it may be located on chromosome 7. Okay. Now, <clears throat> further, you know, if we see what are these walks actually or ball associative kinases, you know. So, so you have to understand that in plants there is a broad uh, uh, group of receptors, what we call receptor like kinases or RLKs. And in this group of receptors, we have a family of genes. You know, this is SRLKs, LRR RLKs, like this walk. Walk is one of the receptor like kinases in plants. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six um, major families of uh, receptor like kinases in plants. Now, if you see, these kinases have, all of them have the transmembrane domain. You can see here, and all of them have uh, this serine uh, uh, serine kinases. Okay, so the differences on the uh, in the domains which are located outside the cell. This is inside cell, and this is the outside wall uh, uh, wall part of it. So here you see the EDF factor in the VOX and uh, in other, uh, you have other domains here, like lectin, like classes and these are the So our gene belong to this family of receptor-like kinases, keep this in mind, basically. And since you have to understand this, it is located, or these receptor-like kinases are located on the cell membrane, and uh, protrude outside into the walls and therefore they are involved in signal perceptions and also in cell-to-cell -cell communications, you know. So basically they are communication signals, okay. Now, <clears throat> to begin with, uh, in aerobdopsis, five walks were functionally characterized. And uh, in the genome, the walk family had 22 members in Arabidopsis, out of which five were functionally characterized for their role in pathogen responses. And very importantly, if you see cell elongation and plant development. These were the two walks which were which were uh, characterized having a role in pathogen responses or in cell elongation during plant development. And after that, these kind of genes were also identified using immunological uh, related techniques from other plants like pea, tobacco, maize. And uh, you looking at the ESTs, they were also uh, shown to be present in tomato, soybean, wheat, and rice. Okay. So when we started working and reached to this level, we found out that already uh, 125 walk genes have been annotated by 2005. You know, this is after the rice genome sequence was published and worked upon. You know. So, uh, we had a, uh, a, a sort of uh, uh, footage to continue working in this direction. That is, A, it is part of uh, a larger gene family of rice, having 125 members in it. And uh, by the time we finished this work, or we started first and finished it, there was no walk gene which was functionally uh, characterized in rice. Okay, so functions of these uh, walk genes were, were unknown or not known. Okay, so we thought of uh, you know we thought that it's it's a good candidate to work on. You know, so so uh, what we. Uh, 
what we understood so far is by using RAPD RTPCR approach and using in vitro plant resolution system, we could fish out a gene uh, which was uh, uh, whose sequence matched with uh, uh, matched with uh, uh, a known gene of Arabidopsis that is Wallace-Sitted kinases and this family, uh, th this family of gene belong to a larger group of uh, receptor-like kinases, you know, and uh, and uh, in rice it had about 125 members annotated after rice genome sequence was known. Okay, so from here, what happens now? PCR or no PCR first you have to demonstrate that the gene which you have amplified is part of the genome. Always before starting, one has to show that uh, it is part of the genome and not experimental artifact. Okay. So <clears throat> a sudden analysis was done using genomic, uh, uh, genomic DNA, you know, and in this case, the genomic DNA was uh, digested with E. coli, uh, e, uh, sorry, E. coli 1. Now, <clears throat> this gene sequence doesn't have a site for E. coli 1. However, it showed a site of ND3. So, ND3 cuts it uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the middle of the gene and generates two fragments, one towards the left, the left side and another towards the right side of the gene and uh, and the eco one is going to cut the genome and which will have a the, the whole gene in it so uh, the expectation of uh, 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 hybridization or hybridizing uh, uh, bands would be with eco one one uh, band is expected and with Hindi 3, 2. And this is what we see very clearly. Uh, the probe, probe is the, is the uh, gene-specific cDNA. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the control and 900 base pair. And this is the uh, genomic uh, 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 DNA hybridizing to the probe, indicating very clearly that the amplicon which we had is from the genome and not an experiment artifact. Okay. Now, if you do uh, the promoter analysis, okay, after knowing that it is part of the genome, we try to do some promoter analysis in the five prime upstream uh, sequences, which showed characteristic data box, cat box, and then we had uh, PREs or prolete responsive elements. I talked about this uh, element earlier in the previous lecture. In addition to this, it had the thylene cell, cell silicate responsive elements and also dehydration responsive elements. So this is, and in addition to st stress responsive elements, it also had pollen and root specific motifs. Now this is very important and uh, we will talk about it uh, later. So, in addition to these response elements, uh, the five prime upstream region also showed pollen and root specific motifs. It means that the, the presence of these elements and motifs make this gene to express under these conditions of uh, uh, ethylene or salicylic acid or dehydration. And also, it makes it, I mean, the presence of pollen and root specific motifs make this gene to express in organ specific manner. Now keep this in mind. So, this is very important information which was generated, uh, you know. So, after knowing that the gene amplified is part of uh, the genome, and also uh, it had relevant uh, 
response elements in it which one is or we were looking for so in this we see the uh, organ specific uh, motives so we went for uh, expression profile to see uh, in lab or under wet conditions how and where it expresses this gene is expressing itself so <clears throat> If you see here, uh, here we have used the uh, cDNA from the uh, the uh, differentiating cation. Now, from where this uh, gene was was uh, amplified using RPDRTP here. So this is the uh, the zero day old cDNA and this is after four uh, four days, eight days and 12 days. And uh, RNA was extracted like previously and the uh, cDNA was synthesized and that was used for PCR. Okay, and this time the gene specific primers were used and conditions were very stringent so that no non-specific amplification is seen. So what you see here, that in rapidly proliferating cali, the, uh, the expression is very, 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 very low as compared to after four days, eight days, and 12 days. So it means uh, the gene is differentially expressing itself uh, in the cells which are undergoing differentiation. Okay, but now when you look at this um, panel, here the northern analysis was done where the RNA from uh, eight day old rice seedlings, that is one, wherein you have root and shoot both together, and then from shoot, and then root, and then panicle. So the RNA was extracted, run it on gel, and then be transported onto the uh, membrane and then probe with the, uh, the <coughs> cDNA uh, of uh, uh, which was amplified here you know so so you can see here the gene is uh, expressing differentially in roots not in seedlings not in uh, shoots but in roots panicle also it doesn't didn't show now, when we say panicle, panicle is the uh, uh, the flowering in rice. So you have to uh, that undergoes a developmental pattern. So uh, when we repeated this experiment, since the gene had root and panicle specific uh, motives, so we did a sort of a kinetics, different stages of panicle. And we could see that uh, at very early stage of panicle development, this gene expresses itself. So in this panel, again, this is northern hybridization from uh, leaf, leaf base, uh, shoot, root, and panicle. So very specifically, this gene expresses in, uh, in the root and the panicle. Panicle early phase of the panicle development, not the later. Okay, so this is uh, again artificial with, uh, by using gene specific uh, primers under stringent conditions to avoid any kind of non specific uh, amplifications. So this uh, uh, this indicated that this gene expresses itself. Uh, differentially and uh, only in a root and panicle specific manner. Okay. We also looked at whether what's happening uh, to the other uh, conditions like drought, cell slication, ABA and NSCL. So when the plants were exposed to these conditions and uh, another analysis was done, you can see these are the control plants, 6, 12, 24, different times, you know, and under test conditions, you can see the expression of this gene is uh, uh, 
uh, is decreased or eliminated. So whenever we talk of a gene under control or, an, or regulated, or if it has a regulated gene expression, so it can be upregulated, it can be downregulated. So in this case, what, what, what appears that uh, this gene is uh, downregulated under these conditions. So under normal conditions, you have fairly good expression, but when plant senses uh, the uh, either drought conditions, salicylic acid or uh, high salinity or epsic acid, it is immediately downregulated. And which is uh, which is uh, which is very much expected uh, for genes to respond to either they are upregulated or downregulated. So in this case, uh, it is downregulated. This gene is downregulated. You know. Uh, okay. Further, if you see that we have uh, uh, seen the expression of this gene in proliferating cali or differentiating cali when they are transferred to NAA and PAP hormones. So we check whether what happens in the rapidly proliferating cali on 24D, whether it is expressing here or it gets induced only when they are transferred to discomposition of uh, plant growth regulators. So what we did, did, we checked it in presence of both BAPNA and BAP alone and and, and interestingly you can see that this gene is getting upregulated in presence of uh, BAP alone, NA or BAP plus NA. It means these two hormones thus uh, upregulate this uh, gene uh, indicating that probably it has some role in uh, the uh, in the differentiation process. So to conclude from uh, this section, what what um, has been done? So it it indicates that it is induced in the differentiating cali, shows organ specific expression primarily in roots and panicle, and uh, it shows down regulation by various stress conditions like salinity, ABA, but is not affected during drought conditions, okay? And is upregulated by exogenous polyene application and also by PAP and NA. So, uh, so <clears throat> these results were uh, pretty encouraging for us to go ahead with, uh, uh, with further uh, characterization of the gene functionally what happens and as you know the functional characterization is done by raising transgenic plants either you overexpress the gene or underexpress or uh, silent the gene in this case we uh, in this case we uh, silenced it using RNA technology. So in my next session, I will discuss our results with uh, the, when we use silence this gene using RNA technology, what happens. You know. So thank you very much for viewing and uh, we will uh, meet again.